Hey everyone, it's Billy Ray here. Welcome back to part two of this three-part series where I'm covering the SX10, SX12 data workflow um, into TBC. Uh, part one, we covered exporting out from Trimble Access and imp importing into Trimble Business Center. And then we did some project setup and looked at some of the features there. In part two here, we're going to cover scan registration and refinement and we're going to go over colorization and point cloud classification. So let's get started. So before we get into registration, I think it's imperative that we circle back on some of the options settings under point clouds. Um, one of the first things that we want to do is make sure that we have large enough rendering memory cache here under option number one. Currently you see it set to a default of two. Um, if you just type in 100 right here and hit tab, that will set it to about half the physical RAM size on your computer and I think that'll be enough for um, most users. Uh, the next setting is to make sure the copy point cloud project folder box is checked. Um, this will be this is imperative and it will you know you'll need this to be checked to be able to visualize your point cloud uh, once you save your job and then come back and do further analysis. And then, as you remember on, uh, when I, in the first video when I brought the data in, um, uh, as far as color, colorization on import, if I would have had this um, box unchecked here, it would have not tried to colorize my point cloud data set. So I would say let's go ahead and keep this unchecked, and then we'll process panoramas, and then we'll colorize our point cloud data set at a later time. Okay, picking up from our first video um, where we left off at now I just want to move into the scan registration process here we've got our overall data set here and now I've got a couple of floating scans out here that that I performed in the field I'm going to turn all that raw data off and we're going to start the registration process we're going to where we're going to bring those scans into our overall data set so here we've got stations one two and three Station setups, you can see those are um, traditional setups out in the field. They they're, they got the S in front of them there. That signifies that they're station setups. And then we got our moving stations down here at the bottom. Those are what I refer to as floating scans. So we have our moving stations and we have our reference stations. And what we want to do is we got a reference station here on the top left. And then over here on the right, we've got our moving stations and down here in the bottom we've got our registration results so when we run this uh, pairwise registration we're going to bring that um, moving scan registration station 2 is going to be registered to the overall reference station and we'll just go ahead and run this um, I'll hit register pair and automatically register pair so you can see down here where it's computing the registration um, I'm going to jump over here into Trimble Access again real quick and show you where those um, floating scans came from. So I'll jump back in my project, measure, we go under SX10, and then out in the field we have our station set up. This is where you set up on a known and you backside a known, typical robot setup. And then we also have uh, the scan station option down here where we we are not setting up on a known or backside no we're just moving our S sx10 to a uh, location in the field okay jumping back over here into tbc down here in the registration results we can see that the uh, registration has completed um, we've got our scan station is moved into the correct location here in our in our overall scan back into our reference scan stations. Now just a quick look here and we can see that you know that fit into place really well. Um, you got your residuals down here at the bottom um, and everything looks good and we um, added that to the reference. Now I want to add uh, moving station number one into the overall reference stations and, and we can just see here where that's um, not lining up properly so I'm going to say automatically register pair again. Yeah, and please make note that sometimes when you run this automatically register pair in the pairwise registration, it may not fall into the right location. You may have to run it a couple times. It may get it close and then we can run it again. 
So I ran it here. Uh, looks like everything's lining up with this. Um, we got my residuals down here in the bottom right. Um, looks like the registration result shows that I got a great fit on that. Just a quick look, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to reference. After you've completed the pairwise registration, you're going to want to do an overall refinement of your project. So we'll go into the refinement tool here, and you'll see that we've got our scan stations, and we'll leave those as fixed. And then we've got our floating stations, our scan stations, and we'll have those as um, not fixed. So we'll hit refine overall registration, and then it's going to tell us that Two of our stations are going to be on level, and we'll go ahead and say OK here. And then you'll get your, you'll get a registration report. And with this report here, we can see we got about two hundreds in uh, cloud to cloud error. Uh, you can, you know, then save this report out as a PDF in your project folder. Now that registration is complete, now we want to move over into processing our panoramas. So up here on the far right, we go to process panoramas. We've got a couple options we can select here. Balance the exposure for all the images. Um, or we can blend the edges of all of our adjoining images. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check both of these for all of our stations. And then we'll hit process. So once that's done processing, you've got a couple of options up here at the top for exporting those out to KMLs. Or you can export your panoramas out. Um, so these are a couple functions that were down below in the earlier versions of TVC and now they've put them up here at the top so you can export your station panoramas as well. And we'll go ahead and just run this um, export out to KML and we'll see what that looks like here in Google Earth. And as we zoom in here you can see we can um, just jump into one of the stations um, It'll give us a quick look of um, the imagery from the SX-10 out on the project site after the blending process of the images um, and clean up those edges. So you can see now how the uh, processing panoramas will give you an overall, your point cl cloud an overall uniform look later when you do the colorization on the point cloud. And then you can export your station panoramas and save those to your project folder again. So now I'm going to colorize the point cloud and we can see all the colorable scan points that are for each scan station here. I'm going to select all those and just run that process and colorize our point cloud. So now that we've colorized the point cloud, we want to extract our point cloud regions uh, and classify them. So we've got a couple of options here under the classification types. We've got outdoor and indoor. I'm going to select outdoor for what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and select the point cloud and then we're going to have one region per class and we got buildings, ground, high vegetation, poles and signs, and power lines. So keep in mind you want to keep this uh, checked here. Uh, we want to create one new region per class. That way all of our buildings will be on one region and not separated out into multiple regions per building or per, per tree. So after the classification process here, you can see how everything's separated out. Um, I can go over to my um, view filter manager here, and I can see all my regions. i got buildings, default layer, ground, high vegetation, poles and signs, and power lines. Um, if we need to run this uh, routine again, we may have multiples of these, and this will get into the point where we might want to come over here into... Um, under point cloud regions under project explorer if you've got multiple regions after you run the classification process several times you can come over here under project explorer and you can merge those regions together and now i got everything turned off and you can see how quickly i can just get down to bare earth with that classification process that wraps up part two of this three-part series next up i'll cover feature extraction surface creation um, and exporting out of TVC and to third-party software.